The sun's coming up, beautiful day. We are taking on Lake Superior, Shawamigan Bay, and Ashland. Got a good group of guys out there. The goal is to bend rods, but also more importantly, have fun. Stick with us, we're gonna have a good time, right boys? Let's get it. What's really awesome about targeting fish on Lake Superior is, again, the diversity, the dynamic bite you have out here, and the different species you can get. One of the put and take fish that's very popular for people to come out here and catch is a spike trout, right? It's a near coastal water trout that has those genetics of a brook trout, but has that ability to fight like a lake trout. It's a mix of a lake trout and a brook trout. And that's what makes a spike trout really awesome. Also, the brown trout. I mean, it's absolutely blowing up out of proportions these days. It's doing really well. It's on its way to being as equal as a Lake Michigan uh, trout fishery. We've caught a lot of fish from 25 to 30 inches and you know, five years ago, we weren't really catching all those. I mean, we were catching once in a while, but most of them were pretty small juvenile fish. So they're growing and they're doing really well. If you come out here and you spend a full day, eight o'clock in the morning till well after dark, you have the opportunity to do a great job with a mixed bag. And when I mean mixed bag, I'm talking more than what you're gonna catch on any inland lake. It's clear, it's crisp, it's fun. Get out there, enjoy it. You're gonna have yourself a great time. So one of the biggest things that uh, you don't want to do when you got the buddy system going and you're out drilling holes is not box the next guy in. So we like to do parallel lines. It keeps everybody at an even take of having the best chance of catching fish and not ruin the other. You see community holes pack up all the time in big circles or boxes. Well, the guy in the middle, he always has a struggle, but the guys on the outside tend to do better. So if you put yourself in a line with your buddies, you're doing yourself a big favor. You also kind of want to be out when we're fishing on this Lake Superior here. Sometimes the current might be so bad that you want to have yourself a transducer hole because you want your bait to be picked up on the side of you. So we don't know what it's doing today, but it comes in and satiates. What Lake Superior has that people don't understand is a tide. The tide is called the sache. And what that does is when we have strong northeast winds or out of the north and the, the south shore here, it blows a lot of water in here. After those winds retreat, that water goes back out. So your bait might be going like this for half the day, and it might be going like this for half the day. So it's important to sometimes put holes right next to each other so you have a transducer hole and your jigging hole. I am going to introduce you to the jaw jacker. So check your local regulations, because in Wisconsin, these are legal. In Minnesota, they're illegal. And I don't know about the quotas and everywhere else, but uh, some places they're legal and some places they're illegal. So they're very productive when you got a hot bite. And what I mean is the fish are aggressive, their attitude's right, and they're taking bait. They're counterproductive when that bite is slow. Because what happens with these jaw jackers or automatic fishing, uh, automatic fishermen and all those other things is that once this thing pops, that's it. If you got your fish, it's on, but if you missed your fish, it's over. That's the disadvantage of it. When you're using set lines, you know, you're not paying attention to these lines all the time. They're outside your shack, you're fishing, you're jigging. Every once in a while you're looking. So it's important that you have the right bait doing the right thing at all times. So one thing I like to do is I'll scrape off the scales a little bit and what will happen is when this guy swims this thing's gonna glitter like a Christmas tree put a little bling bling in the water so to speak so it's a better attractant for those cruising fish and I feel a lot more confident doing that you know there's no rhyme or reason in depth these fish come cruising at all levels so you can have a it's important to do a variance you want one shallow you want one midsection you want one on the bottom you never know where they're going to come from but i do promise you one thing if they see a bait they can see it from a long ways away so there's really again no rhyme or reason at your depth column so if you don't want to go the route of using jaw jackers automatic fishermen's and other contraptions that set lines automatically for you there's nothing better than an old-fashioned tip up and uh it's kind of like watching a bobber go down forever and ever. It'll always be cool and attractive to watch that flag just pop. And so this also judges the fish's attitude too, because this time a fish can take it and they don't feel the pressure and all that stuff. You know, the jaw jacker might pop, but with the tip up, if it pops and they let go, it doesn't mean they can't come back and take it again. They're not biting too hard. Some guys will even leave these baits on the bottom and these trout will even pick them up off the bottom. So actually we're gonna do that with this one. We're gonna go all the way to the bottom and let this one sit on the floor. And whether it's a splake trout, lake trout, brown trout, or whatever, they'll bite just like a burbot or uh, a sturgeon. Give it a second. Got him. Yep, there's a fish out here. Hippo! Doesn't feel real big, but that's 
It took out quite a bit of line though. One. There she goes. Bigger than we thought it was. It was so far out there that I was catching up to it. Like that. It's got some pretty dynamic head shaking going on. Boy, it's, it's heavy. It's like a brick. Might be a laker. We'll, we'll see if when we get to see that if, fork tail. If it's a splake, it's a big one. Yeah, if it's a splake, it's a real big one. I'm going to call wake trout too. I'm going to go splake trout. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Bets are on, yeah. gentlemen. What do you think? What's yours take? Splake trout. It's real nice. These setups here, he's got real, real thin diameter monofilm and almost crystal clear line in this crystal clear water. It is a giant adv advantage for these fish because they can't see um, it. Uh, the one thing though, when you're playing with it is that you gotta really finesse it. You don't wanna really horse it or she'll be, she'll be cooked, man. You'll snap off and that is always a bad deal. Hey, wait, it's fighting. Ready, Chris? That is a lake trout. Hold them up there, bro. Chris, thank you. <laughs> so when we attack this water on big water, as in Lake Superior, the most important thing to do is spread out. I know it's real nice to sit next to your buddy and stuff, but um, you know, there's a lot to be said about hole hopping on inland lakes and other types of bodies of water, but that's just not the case out here. It's really kind of a patience game. Um, a lot of people take it as a, like, kind of like bow hunting for a big deer. It's really wait and wait for a fish to come by. Like I mentioned a lot is that these fish are cruising miles on end. So to be moving around all the time, you're trying to catch up to those fish as opposed to just crossing paths with one. So when you're out with a group of guys, it's best to you know be a minimum of 30 yards, even more up to 100 yards. Right now we got uh, five shacks out here and we're all split up about a half a football field apart. So you know it can be a lot of work. You lose some weight, burning some calories, getting tip ups and that sort of thing, but it's the biggest advantage. And then the other thing is, you know, in Wisconsin waters, the Shawamigan Bay, you can use three lines per person. So you set up yourself in a strategic jigging spot and put tip ups and set lines on each side of you but being a parallel line do not try to box yourself in in a big circle kind of run it in a line and that'll be more productive and uh, you can dial the fish in that way well you know we have to spread these holes out it's not productive to fish the same area so chris is way here on the opposite side of where mike and i were just at so we just did a a track 400 meter dash to get here yeah and uh, we're heavy breaths, but that's okay. We're gonna be even more heavy breath when we get to see this guy or girl. Yep. It really is. Not that quick. Let him rip. <laughs> Woo! Nice. Giddy up, Chris. Nice fish, buddy. Got a little bit of a uh, line twist over the nozzle, but that's how shows you how wild they are out here, right? No kidding. A dandy. Really a nice fat plumper fish. Yeah. It's uh, got beautiful colors. Yep. Great go. In the 10 years I've been fishing out in the Twin Ports area in the extended areas of Lake Superior ice, uh, including where we're at in the confines of uh, Chihuahua Bay today, um, the fishery's been awesome. It's dynamic, it's diverse, it's a lot of fun. The one thing I do try to tell people not to do is get in the habit of being a walleye fisherman or, or something like that. Be real sporadic. Come out here and try different things. This is the water to do it. These trout, these lake that these fish that live in this water are very wild. So they're always 100 miles an hour and very spontaneous eaters. So there's really no rhyme or reason of what you do some days, and uh, and that's just the way it goes. There. Nice, beautiful splake trout, Lake Superior, hatchery fish, the put and take kind. Woo. They don't quit swimming even when they get to the shore. <laughs> They're unbelievable, powerful fish. You know, it's not the, the most biggest fish you're gonna find in the sea, but pound for pound, it's hard to compete with them. As you can see, it just crushed it. I mean, he came up 
it's the cat and mouse game. Reel up fast, they chase up, and then open your bill so it goes back down. They just whip the U-turn and head right south and uh, hit it on the drop, which is kind of awkward, but uh, it tightens up real nice. And then it was uh, it was game on, baby. What I'm also counting on is my dead sticks, my set lines that are off to the right and left of me. And so go out there, do those things, and you'll find yourself catching fish. This is the fourth fish today and all different species. Brown trout, white fish, splake, and now this herring. You never know what you're going to get out here. I still got about three or four more species to go too. <laughs> we'll see what happens. So in Lake Superior, sometimes you get a lot of current. It's very important to think about the mindset of what lure you're using and what spoon you're losing. Today we're using Northland fishing tackle spoons, of course, and uh, this is the Glow Shot. Glow Shot is an excellent spoon, but when we got a lot of current, this is a little counterproductive. What we have out here is sage, so when the sage happens, that current takes this thing off to the sides. So although it's very good and, and, and all that stuff, it works really better when the current stops down and it's got more bling bling. So when you're jigging on a like calm or the current's taking a break, it does a lot of wobbly stuff. So that's the way I like to go in that tactic, but I'm not really fishing deep water with that stuff. The bigger, the heavier, less profile wingspan of a lure is more important to me. So we got two of them here. We got a Northland buckshot glider and regular Northland buckshot spoon. So the difference between these two, obviously, is the wingspan. This one here will move and do a lot more bling bling, zing zang, stuff like that, where this one's kind of more up and down and vertical. This one is able to take on current a little bit better than this one, but if I'm in shallow water, I would prefer to do this one. Deeper water, I prefer to do this one. And even further than that, I like the bling of a Northland Fishing Tackle Macho Minnow, which has that little fin that does a little zing zang at the bottom of that. Point being is bring them all with you because you never know what kind of conditions you're gonna have in Lake Superior. They change by the minute, by the way. And so it's important to have all bases covered. And what I mean is bring all the lure selections you got with you. Yes, that's definitely a cool. Yep. Ready, here it comes. Take her easy. Ooh, that's a nice one. Take her easy. Get that thing up. Get it around there. Get it around there. Scoop, 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 scoop. Yeah, baby, woo! <laughs> oh, goodness gracious. Breaking the species barrier, salmon baby. We first salmon we've caught all weekend. Tell you what, yeah, beautiful silver baby. Um, it came out of nowhere. This thing shot up like a rocket. I couldn't be more happy with the. What a great weekend with these guys, man. These what a fun couple days on the ice out of Lake Superior to close out the season. Yeah, I mean, couldn't ask for better weather. It's late season. Uh, we're getting down to the end now, baby. Um, Yes! <laughs> <laughs> All right.